So the folks at Polygonic have just recently released an interesting free tool that would allow you to do a whole lot of things in Blender totally for free. And instead of relying on several add-ons to get these features, you can now get all of them bundled into one beautiful tool called Ngon. Ngon is totally for free and for anyone who likes to get this, you can simply go over to the link in the description and grab it. This is not just free, it is also open source. So you can definitely go over to the GitHub link which I'm also going to put in the description and check this one out for yourself as well. And today we're going to talk about how Endgun fits into your workflow and certain things that you can get out of it. And for the assets which we're going to be using for this video, they will be reliant on the botanic and traffic tool all available from the folks at Polygonic. And for those who would like to see more of those, you can also check the link in the description or check the channel where we've covered some of these tools before. And with that said, let's get right into it. And when Blender simply open right here, all you need to do to get things going is go over to edit, go over to preference and install the Endgun add-on. The Endgun add-on and asset browser is a brand new way of interacting with tools from the folks at Polygonic. This is a pretty set of tools and functions that will allow you work in Blender super easily. More so, the Endgun asset browser simply allows you to find things within your asset browser quickly rather than the traditional asset browser that ships with Blender. Next thing you need to do is go over and install an asset pack and in this case we're going to install the Botanic and also the traffic. Now with these two installed, you can definitely go ahead and check out some of the preferences that has to do with it. And at any point in time you'll want to update this, you can either update this automatically or you can set it to check out for updates within a specific time. So with that done, all you need to do next is click on the bugger menu and save your preference. And with the preference window saved and closed, let's take a look at how these tools actually work. So the first thing which you need to do is to tap N on the keyboard and you notice right here that we've got Polygonic. Now the end gun sits right on the top and you can see every other tool from the folks at Polygonic stacking right underneath it. So what exactly does end gun do? Like we mentioned earlier, it is a set of tools that are being bundled together and this deals with a couple of things that you might probably be needing extra add-ons for. So for example, the snap into ground feature, which is incredibly useful, these now ships with the end gun. Random rotation is also a cool function that ships with it. This ships with the scattering tool, which means you can now scatter stuff within Blender. And how you can do this is very simple. Say we would like to scatter within this plane. What we can do is to make sure that we have the plane selected and we can go over to where we have the scatter and click on the plus sign. By simply clicking on the plus sign, we're adding a particle system to this, which we can accept by clicking on OK. And if you go all the way down, you would notice that you do have a couple of things that deals with density and all that. And we'll get to that in a bit. Now, for you to start scattering anything within your scene, what you need to do first is to have the object selected and the plane selected. So since we would like to scatter this flower, we would have to have that selected then select the plane, go all the way down, and we can click on this button that says append selection. By simply doing that, what we've just done is to scatter every single thing around that plane. From here is where you can start doing some interesting stuff like we mentioned earlier. So you can go all the way to where you have the parameters and you can start playing with the scale. So for example, you like to drop the scale down and probably you like to increase the number of particles that you have, which is in this case, the scatter. So you can do all of that and you can do even more stuff. At the same time, you can choose to paint several parts. So for you to paint your geometry, in this case, let's say you want to paint the surface where you want density to happen, you can. So we can of course go ahead and click on the paintbrush, tap F on the keyboard, scale this up. At this point, once we're painting, you definitely notice that we don't have anything happening. And this is because our object doesn't have subdivision. So we need to go in, have that selected, dive in, and let's subdivide this a couple of times. And once we have this subdivided, we can of course go back to what we had before. So I'm just going to click on density brush one more time and we can paint. So at this point, we can paint where we would like these things to exist. You can, of course, go in and paint some more stuff. So just in case you like to paint the land as well, you can actually go ahead and do that. If you're thinking about playing with rotation skills and all that stuff, you also have some parameters here. And as cool as this scattering tool is, it is also worth mentioning that you can use various particle systems on the same plane. So let me explain. What you can do is instead of sticking to one particle system, and driving all of your geometries like this, you can create multiple particle system. Select the surface, go over to the section where you have the scatter, click on the plus sign, create a new particle system, and you can definitely just go ahead and turn this off. So at this point, you can now use this particle system 
to populate this plan. So the system is exactly the same thing like we explained earlier, as you can go through and play with the parameters and mix and match things however you want. A cool tool like this is available and you can definitely go ahead and grab it alongside all of the cool tools from the folks at Polygonic. More so, the end panel and gun plugin also comes with some conversion selection tools. And this includes linked, editable, and also the very own remove duplicates. These two are very self-explanatory. For the editable, what you can do with this is pretty simple, as if you work with tools that are linked to other files that are actually outside Blender, you can simply click on editable and make that editable. So in cases like this, where we have a simple vehicle, which you can drag and drop from either your asset browser or from a linked file, and you cannot edit or animate this however you want, with the editable, you can now make this fully editable and you can have access to all of the parameters and modes that this currently supports. There's also a visibility setting, which you can definitely go ahead and explore. And there is one which I think a lot of people would love, and that is the dot blend maintenance. So within this section is where you can definitely do what we mentioned earlier, which is remove duplicate data, and you can find missing files. At the same time, you can migrate assets and migrate your assets from Material League 4 to the recent version of Material League, which is Polygonic Material Library set of tools. Ngon also ships with its very own asset browser that is tailored to helping you source, find, and also filter contents within the Ngon asset browser. And to have access to this, all you need to do is go over to end panel and click on the window button right here. And once you do that, a new window simply pops up. Now, because we already have only two of these packs installed, these are the ones that we have access to. You can either filter by using tags. In this case, if we simply click on autumn, only the autumn related products or assets will be visible. We can also filter by taxonomy, dimension, height, family, manufacturing, types of vehicles, the amount of weight, height, and all of these parameters. Now, depending on the assets that you have and the properties that these assets come with, those are the things that you can filter with. So for example, if you're working with a material leak tool from the folks at Polygonic, or probably you're working with the material tool, you can choose to filter based off properties that comes with it. The folks at Polygonic have also mentioned that there are a few compatible asset packs that you can use with this. So you may want to go ahead and check out some of the asset packs that are available. I do know Evermotion have a pack that is very compatible with the Ngon browser. And to any of the packs that you install within the Ngon browser, they will also be available within the native asset browser that you have in Blender. Now, the reason why I would suggest that you have both parties is some development might be coming over to the Ngon browser as this is just the first release of the tools that the Encom browser is coming with. And unlike the traditional asset browser, which you would actually need to go find some of these things yourself, with the Encom browser, you can do a lot more than what you can get with the default asset browser. Accompanied with all of the tools that we just explained how you can work with, this just simply makes it super cool. And I would suggest that you go ahead and get it. Besides, it is totally for free. So this is it for those who are thinking about exploring the brand new set of tools that the folks at Polygonic have actually put out there. They might want to go ahead and check out Botanic 7. Botanic 7 is the brand new installment of their tree and vegetation library that also offers some beautiful scattering features and some pre-designed scattering tools that you can use to amplify and build your vegetation and landscape scenes really, really quickly. And for those who are also thinking about doing some very interesting things with the traffic tool, which is also another tool from the folks at Polygonic, then you might want to go ahead and check this one out as they've also updated the traffic tool with some interesting assets and some interesting tools as well. We're probably going to cover this in a new video. And for those who like to see this, you may want to get subscribed so that you don't miss that when this comes out. So this is it. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.